Hello and welcome back to our channel. Um, today we'll look how to install the SU30MK mod and uh, look inside the cockpit as well. Uh, so first thing you will be provided a link on release date of 26th of January. Uh, once you've got the download, just open the folder. You'll find this SU30MK underscore SF. All you need to do is copy this, go to your C drive users username uh, pardon username saved games dcs mods aircraft and paste it right here with along along your other modes inside the mode you should see all these files so that's it for installation uh, next thing we look at is how to configure your aircraft so as you know the SU-30 uh, uses FC-3 package for its weapon and targeting system. To configure those you need to select uh, which role you are going to fly. For example, if I plan to fly an air-to-air -air loadout, if I plan to fly an air-to-air -air mission, I will select air-to-air -air and uh, use the uh, SU-33 package or if I select air-to-ground, I will use the SU-25T package. So for that uh, you have to go inside the mod folder, the SU30MK underscore SFM folder, then the config luas. Once you open the config lua you should see everything over here along with the names of the aircraft that are inside this mod. So all the mod, uh, all the aircraft are, in this, are described here. So if you want to fly an air to ground loadout you will select AG right here. A G and if you are flying air to air loadout uh, using radar and stuff you have to select A A. The next thing we have to configure is EFM faults. So we do not have a perfect EFM right now it's work in progress much often uh, but there is an EFM inside our mod package uh, you can use it if you want don't use it it's your choice. Basically we only wanted to do an SFM for now while EFM is in study but it still has it. If you turn this value into true, that will enable your EFM and it will give you uh, uh, ability to use EFM. Yeah, remember EFM, when you fly an EFM, you will have a subsonic aircraft, but uh, you may be able to perform some complex things with that uh, using the thrust vector, of course. So once this is done, you save it. Uh, rest of the things you don't have to touch. Uh, once multi crew gets implemented or, or if we do implement it before release, all you need to do is turn, turn this value to false. That will en enable multi crew. And remember, EFM is supposed to be true when you enable multi uh, disable FC. That's it. And now you can start turn on DCS. Alright, so we are in DCS right now, uh, so let's check out what weapons do we have on our Su-30. So, uh, Su-30 will be found, all the aircrafts will be found in Russia as well as their origin, country of origin. For example, MKA will be found in Algeria, MKI will be found in India and MKM in Malaysia and so on. So I'll So moving on, let's check out the weapons. Alright, for weapons, let's start with the SU-30 MKA. So for MK it uses very standard weapons, it has the R73, R77, remember R77 and R27E are both are custom weapons made by us, not a standard ones. Then we've got uh, for air to ground we've got KH-59M, KH-59MK. Uh, some of these weapons are actually more experimental weapons but we'd like to have it on our mod. So yeah, there's R77 again, 
R20R bombs also we've got the regular uh, package including cap B taps all the versions that you would uh, usually see on a Russian aircraft uh, there's some pods pods are mostly just for showcase they are not useful uh, in their functional ability so it just for showcase so the next one we have is a MKI so it uh, has a very interesting weapons package for uh, short range we have R73 as our uh, standard uh, heaters the next we and uh, next we have is the R77 you saw it already uh, then we've got I Derby ER 100 km range uh, dual pulse missile Astra Mark 1 the next one we have is uh, R27 EA this is a experimental weapon that never came into service uh, it's an active radar R27 that never saw the day of its life so uh, day of service so next one we have is R27 EP so EP is passive tracker it has a passive radar homing uh, all it tracks all it does is uh, track the enemy's uh, radar enemy's radar emissions on its terminal piece so next we have is the ER those are the standards we've already seen ER R77 and the R77 dash 1 dash 1 is a little bit uh, better than R77 it has a range about 100 kilometers at least to say we have some bombs we have some air to ground weapons for air to ground there are there's an interesting Rudra M1 so this is an anti-radiation missile has a good range uh, so the next we have is a saw pod. Uh, this is called the smart anti-airfield weapon. They are used to destroy uh, targets on the airfield and uh, has 100 kg uh, warhead on them. So next thing we have are for show we've got some pods here like the lightning pod right here. This is again for show it's not functional. And uh, we've got Brahmos missile, anti ship Brahmos missile has a range of about 3 to 400 kilometers. Uh, this is a fire and forget missile. All you need to do is point it at a direction where the ships are and forget about it. The next thing we have are the regular air to ground missiles. We've got some custom ones like the KS 31 AD and the KS 31 PD. AD is for anti-ship, PD is for uh, SAMs and other targets. So this one has a, bit, a little bit higher range compared to K31A or K31P and uh, basically it's better than it at least. Then we've got uh, the other ones are standard I guess uh, K2090 and uh, L. Alright, uh, we haven't added the custom bombs that are usually fired from the MGI and or the experimental ones like the SPICE 2000 but we'll see that in the future versions. So for now, let's get in the cockpit and I'll show you, let's look around in the cockpit. Alright, so we are in DCS right now, as you can see our cockpit right here, uh, most of the switches are uh, functional it's a uh, clickable so for now you can see on her it's showing you uh, a mixture of FC3 her along with the custom hard we've made so to switch between the herds you can use the switch right here right now it's using a custom plus FC3 once I switch it will show you the FC3 herd and the third one it will show you the custom herd only the custom herd is good enough for navigation but if you want to switch between uh, the air to ground and air to air uh, stuff, you have to use the custom uh, plus FC3 combination. So the next thing we have is the uh, MFDs right here. It will show you the fuel info. It will show you the TSD. TSD is uh, only for marking your waypoints. It's showing the closest waypoint marked towards Anapa Airbase. 
you can adjust uh, some zoom level and zoom level right here a lot of functions need to be added but we don't have much on info so it's gonna be just like this then we've got the VSD screen it's the same screen from that one then TSD the RWR screen you can filter out uh, targets on RWR like you want to ignore C just to disable this one SAM and ED EWR uh, description will be given on the left side right here top right now there is no radar contact or uh, radar display illuminating me so uh, it won't show you anything but when it displays it will on the left top it will show you what type of aircraft or what type of asset is it that's illuminating you then we've got the fuel page some of them are just to show functions we don't know really about how it works so it's just that fuel landing gears system you know the systems you can check it all check it all from here uh, then we've got the weapons MASD page this will show you what weapons you are carrying out right now and what's left using this you can know what you uh, what you have equipped all right for the data link and uh, threads you have to switch to MASD page on the screen the last screen only will show you the MASD page to enable the data link you have to select MASD and the DLD this will show you the dead link right now we are in nav mode so it's not showing any contacts and note there are no contacts around me as well so i'll switch to air to air right here and now you'll have the situational uh, awareness around you uh, tgp is when you have selected air to ground you select tgp you use this targeting method and it will show you how to target this thing. so no function using it right now since we are in air to air All right. So next things we have instrument lighting right here. These are all functional, basically used at night. So yeah. Uh, these are main power switches for your most of the sensors. Then you've got uh, countermeasure dispenser right here. Five at once actually. And that's shaft. Uh, these are also mounted on your uh, uh, throttle, so you can hot uh, key bind them. So also for stick, you need to key bind a couple of things in controls. You have to go to adjust controls first, and go into access commands. In access command, you shall see FCS pitch axe and SCS roll axe. So you need to add these two values on your stick. For keyboard users, unfortunately, we haven't added it yet, but give us a little bit, we may find some solution for you. Um, for till then, you can use the uh, trim keys to, uh, sorry, hotkey the trim hat switches to fly. Just give us a time and we'll uh, create some hotkey points for that. And we are, then we've got... Uh, Cross factoring nozzles are implemented. So you switch, uh, turn this switch on, and the switch on your stick. Now the thrust factoring is on. As you can see. So let's turn that off, and that takes off the light. To switch between the cockpit, you can switch using zero on your uh, numpad once i press zero i switch behind to enable and disable the pilot you can use shift p so this will enable the pilot going back to the front seat uh, the rear uh, seat hasn't been implemented much but uh, yes it has some basic functionalities at least switch back to the front one Alright, so I think that's it for now. Uh, next thing we'll look at is a cold start. 
so it has a proper goal start procedure to turn on all its system so we'll look at that the next time all right thank you